Hello and welcome back to Train Sim TV. In today's video, as you can see in the top left hand corner, it is a new video. We have something new to show off. It is the Midland Railway Butterley version 2. This is a updated and much more um, refined version of the route, again by Lewis Cox. Um, the original route's been available for about a year or two now on the website. Originally it was with um, Vulcan Productions with ourselves over there, um, but Lewis also came over and moved um, and put the content on the OCS website. Now, version 2 comes with um, quite a lot of stuff, so what we're going to do, we'll get this scenario paused, and we'll take a drive, we'll take a look, and just go through all the bits and pieces that you will come to find on this updated version of the route. So, starting off here, um, good afternoon driver, start by opening the doors here at Butterley, and then getting your cab set up. Once you get the right of way down to Swanwick Junction, or Swanwick shall I say, um, you'll be then there, but for a 10 minutes wait, use the time to change ends, get set up for your run back to Hammersmith. Okie dokie, so this is using the actual railways, newly acquired class 142 um obviously the 142s were cascaded um to most well mostly to the uh the, to the scrappy but a number of them were saved and a lot of the heritage railways around the country um managed to adopt one of these units and uh 011 was the one that came to uh this railway and they painted it into the old provincial livery which is what you see here today so we're going to take this one for a little spin on the route. So, I'm using the keyboard today for this video. I'm not using the PVC because I haven't set it up <laughs> uh, on that front. So, I've got the doors open here. Uh, we'll get ourselves set up and then just have a quick look around at the station. We will be passing back through here again, however. Um, so, we've got the destination light. Leave that on. I think that actually is everything we need to do, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. We'll leave it as special because... We haven't got um, Hammersmith as a destination on the actual uh, 142 itself. I do need to, however, go to the rear cab and put the tail lights on. Like so. Take the DRF. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a number of things have been uh, added to the route. I think originally the route had like six custom assets and it now boasts of 35 um, bits and pieces. So. Lewis came to the railway um, last year and did a, a, a load of research. I think it was when the HSTs were operating. They did a weekend, and I think there was a scenario in the route for that uh, that day as well. So that does feature. And I will go through the list of scenarios what come with the route. But yeah, he managed to go around the whole railway on that day and take photos of li literally everything he could go and find, um, basically for research, so they could update the route and uh, add loads of new bits and pieces to it and just put a lot more love into it that's not to say that they didn't put a lot of love in it originally because it was a fantastic release first time around but this just adds an extra dimension with all these little bits and pieces like stuff like just, just the signage and stuff like that i mean i'm probably going to point a few bits and pieces out that probably were in version one i can't remember everything that was in the version one but just going to go for everything to show you bits and pieces like you got stuff like the, obviously the station building which i think was to be fair here on the first version but um again we're just going to show you that and uh, yeah, right away we are good to go i'll pause for a second just to show the station anyway um whether it's been refined or not i'm not overly sure on that one but uh, even still it's a lovely station anyway um so the scenarios themselves use quite a lot of bits and pieces as well um there is a scenario supplement which you may well know how we do things at ots we had um an extra manual for, just for the scenarios themselves this basically talks you through all the requirements that you need to operate each scenario and it is massively it really is recommended that you do go and have a read of that before you go and operate a scenario because um you'll find that you are most likely going to be missing bits and pieces it'll link you to all the bits of pieces that you need so that they're all hyperlinked um as you you would normally expect our um content to be uh just for ease of finding things really rather than to scour through google and searching through different websites for all these bits and pieces <clears throat> that's a full delivery not seen that before. This has been downloaded just for this scenario. That's actually off um, one of Richard Fletcher's uh, skins. But um, there's only, I think, two things I'm missing um, for this scenario, and I, I ran out of time, to be fair, to find them. But it was only a couple of static items, I think, anyway. Uh, one of the packs I don't have, and I think another one was just um, a unit reskin, which, to be fair, I thought I did have, but I clearly don't. So here's one of the things that's been added. 
one of the many sheds. So there's one here. There's a load at Swanwick Junction as well, um, along the uh, the line itself. So we'll we'll show you them when we get down there. But yeah, the uh, the sheds have been put in. Again, these these are these are items really that do give you your railway a lot more character rather than having your kit bash bits and pieces there um, as a substitute. So it's nice to see these are actually uh, in here. Also, uh, signal boxes and stuff as well. Another thing that's been added. Um, so you've got put on the ground frame there. All these cool little things as well. It's like it's little info boards. But originally, A's Gill on the Settle and Carlisle line, this was. So where did this come? Uh, so it came from A's Gill. So, yeah, you can't quite see everything there. But, yeah, it gives you an idea. Um, So it's a Type 2B design with 16 lever thumb uh, tumbler frame. That's cool. So they've obviously acquired it and then took it down piece by piece. Yeah, so piece by piece and then it was uh, removed from there and brought back here and rebuilt, basically. That's cool. I like that. That's ace. That's a cool little feature. No doubt we'll probably see some more bits and pieces like that along the route. Let us get in and uh, take some power and head towards Swanwick Junction. This prestigious journey. Windows open for the ultimate thrash. The ultimate thrash of 15 miles per hour. <laughs> Not quite so much the uh, the old 70, 75 mile now that these units could do. But at least some of them have been saved. It's weird driving a pace on a press route. <laughs> it just really is weird. Now this route, um, the link is in the description below. It is on our on track simulation website. And again, do make sure you check the requirements and everything uh, before you do operate the route fully. I'll go through the requirements when we have our turnaround at um, Swanwick. Uh, this is never done go through to Riddings, but I will fly as far through the route as I can to get down there just to uh, just show you. Uh, but the main the mainstay of uh, work in terms of assets is around Swanwick. Utterly and uh, Hammersmith itself. Let's give it a bit of thrash. So, one of the things that you'll see straight ahead of us now is the track. The track's been swapped. Now, I believe the track originally was Thompson uh, Interactive's track. It's now um, VP track. Which, again, I always say this VP track suits press routes and older style routes really, really well. Like, I say old style, I mean that. Like, old railways so present sort of like older periods sort of it, it does it really really well uh, you'll have to excuse me as well i do have one missing signal on this gantry and i can't figure out why and where it is so uh, at the moment i have it missing but no doubt i'll probably find it but i'm struggling <laughs> And funnily enough, it's the one that gets us into the platform, so we'll have to give it a tab and it should be alright, to be fair. Route should still be set, it's just we're not going to have an indication of where we're going to. You can only see here as well the, the HST setting there, which is the, um, the 125 groups there. there. It's 15 to the station. And as I say, there is a scenario for the HST stuff, so that'll uh, definitely be getting some use. Big ICI wagons as well. Full of that's to be fair. So if you're following in TSW, obviously um, DTG shown the um, the Peak Forest route that they're doing, and they showed a wagon that is actually one of the wagons. So that is one of the wagons that's going to be coming with that steam route. Um, so again, these were actually steam air wagons. Look at them, you wouldn't think they were really as old as they are, but yeah, I think that's, that's like 90 years old or something silly like that. But the, to look at them, the like the bogan stuff, they do look pretty modern, but yeah, they are uh, they are quite a cool wagon to be fair. Um, I think these are from the DT Wagon Pack 3. BP did some stuff with these as well, um, where they added load, um, load of work to them, um, in terms of like skins and sounds and stuff like that. 
um, if anyone is interested in that sort of stuff. Now, Sonic um, had some custom assets here originally as well, like the signage and some buildings and stuff, but there has been a massive amount of new bits and pieces added to this area on top of everything else that was already there. We'll have a look around and just uh, see what's what. It's quite cool to see a H-shirt. It is, that's, it's weird. Now, we're on a, an old shut-down railway that was now made into a press room. But there's loads of modern, which we call it classic as modern. There's modern stock on it now. <laughs> like HSTs and pacers. It's cool. Right, so we've got 10 minutes wait here, so we'll just shut the cab down. We'll prep ourselves at the other end and then we'll take a uh, little walk around. On to the area. We are good for when we need to move on. So, yeah, so already, like, you look around here and you've got all sorts going on. You've got this shed here. Uh, I presume that's the diesel depot. Some of the sign is missing as per real life on the, on the totem there. I mean, there's diesels here, which suggests to me that this is the diesel end. <laughs> You've got the um, the Golden Valley Light Railway as well, which is the little narrow gauge route that runs through um, up that way as well. We'll take a little fly around there in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so this station building, I believe, was already in the first version of the route. But again, there's been extra bits and pieces, that sort of signage and all this sort of stuff. Um, I mean, textures may have been updated, I'm not overly sure. Might be some updates to the model. Just sets the scene lovely. I was always impressed with the big sound, the first version. It's cool. So you've got stuff like this, these little huts and stuff that have been built. Um, again, you've got another one there. And you've also got the Swanix uh, Junction signal box. Looking very fine there with the Bobby waiting the next train to go through. So heading in, uh, we'll go in this direction first. Those are I don't think new, their original existing bits and pieces um, that's just been made use of. So you've got um, a shed down here as well. I'm not always sure which this would be. I'm probably going to say some form of maybe coaching stock or something. We'll maintain wagons and bits and bobs in there. Um, all sorts of stuff strewn about here. It's nice to see with loads of life and stuff in there, like stuff knocking about. I mean, some of the older scenarios, there wasn't as much going on. These scenarios have had a lot more stuff put in them um, as well. So, yeah, they're really, really cool. I think Lewis has been with that. So, whenever the HST weekend was, it was definitely a good few months ago. Um, since then, he's been working on it. And it may have been before, to be fair. I do recall him showing bits and pieces, and then he, he went and... It's been an ongoing thing. So this is uh, to the West Shed. Which is, this is where um, 6233 Duchess of Sutherland is um, based. <clears throat> sort of signage that takes you through to that. It's really cool. There we go. So that's the West Shed. That's uh, another custom item that's been built for this new version of the route. So that is where... Uh, Duchess of Sutherland is based, looked after. Moving back down here, we've got another. Um, I think that's an existing shed. To be fair, I don't think that's custom to this route. Um, as far as I can see, uh, the next custom is this one here. This is the exhibition hall with the uh, the right up the top there. A little shed here looks like a little wagon shed well it's for the narrow gauge railway anyway that is so obviously they store bits and pieces in there cool little signage for this as well so 
That's stuff to do with the membership there. Should probably do a little video on that line at some point. I'm not sure if there's a scenario or not, but we'll probably do a little free round with the uh, Chorus Locos or something. Cool little signage as well. Little station building there. And you've got this one here. So this is um, Heritage Centre. This looks like it's for vehicles more than anything. Uh, but it's got even it's even got the retaining wall included on Mola. And a little street sign. Ridley Row. It just oozes with detail and life. Well, uh, hit the carrier here where you can just take in the, uh, the views of the valley. Everything in front of you. It's a lovely place to sit, to be fair. What else have we got? I'm just exploring. We've got, uh, I'm not really sure if that's new or not, to be, uh, to be fair. Uh, to be fair, uh, to, I can't speak, to be perfectly honest. Uh, what else have we got? That's has to see, that is. I want to say these, maybe? But I'm always sure. No. <laughs> nah, that's based. Where have them come from? I don't know where these have come from. I want to go to editor mode here just to see what these are from because stock train box. These must have come from another route or something because I don't remember Lewis saying he's made these or showing them off. <laughs> so I don't know. Little shed there. Let's have a little fly, uh, fly down uh, Golden Valley. Again, we'll we'll have a little drive on here at some point as a video. It's a lovely little nestled uh, railway though, hidden in the tree line. I do think he made that bridge though. I do recall him showing me this. And this is the top end of the line. Uh, what's this station called? Let's have a look. Uh, Newlands Inn. Newlands Inn Station. Just It sort of follows the, uh, the, the path of the other line. And this is down to Riddings in this direction. There's, as far as I'm aware, there's no new custom bits down here because it just runs down to a loop, which is basically where the Midland Mainline Airwash Valley goes past. I don't know if it'll let me get right down, to be honest. No. But basically, that's it. It runs to a loop there. and The Airwash Valley runs across in that direction up towards um, somewhere. I can't remember what it's called. That's bad that when I built the roof for JT. Um... Oh, what's the place called? Next station up towards uh, Troll Junction. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> May have gone blank at this uh, small hour. Langley Mill, that's it. <laughs> me, me head's just woken up. God. Bear in mind it is like half past 11 in the, uh, in the night. Another signal missing there. I need to find out what these are. I've actually got quite a fair bit of HST stock in them. We've got two power cars and they've got loads of Mark 3s. Right, so whilst we are sat here i'm just going to quickly go through the manual with you so version 2 brings a number of changes and updates to the route including a vast amount of custom assets as well as senior tweaks and improvements um so you included you get six scenarios um with different types of stock different timetables the yards are filled with prototypical stock which will be taxed on lower end pcs but do feel free to edit these scenarios and delete some stock in the yards if you are struggling um on that there's also one free roam which has no trains placed, so you can always put your own bits and pieces in there. Um, features on the route are Hammersmith Station, Butterley Reservoir, Butterley Station, Butterley, uh, Butterley Yard and DMU Shed. 
So that's what the shed was when we first started off at the video. Um, you've then got Princess Royal Class Locomotive Trust West Shed. Um, the Matthew Kirtley Museum. So that's what the museum's called at the Exhibition Hall. The Golden Valley Light Railway. Swanwick Station. Swanwick Diesel Depot. And Riddings Loop. So scenarios that you can expect to see and feature. So there's the Standard Saturday, which runs a Standard Class 5 MT. That's uh, one of them. You've also got the Blue Timetable Steam Service with an LMS 3F Ginty, which is 47327. High Speed Trains, which features this rake here. Pacer Yourself, which is the one we are running currently on this video. Ticket to Ride, which is a Standard Class 4 MT Tank 80080. And then you've also got the yellow timetable DMU service using a class 117. Requi uh, requirements, uh, it's quite lengthy, but um, obviously to get the full experience, it is recommended to have all this. So it needs AP Sky and Weather uh, from St uh, Steam Sound Supremes, Whitby and Pickering Heritage Railway. Uh, that is the assets, not the whole route. You just need the assets out of that. Uh, from Steam Store, the Corish Railway, European Local Asset Pack, Isle of Wight route, and then on the marketplace, the canal pack, platform clutter and scenery, and also the town scenery. North Somerset Railway, Riviera Line in the 50s, Settled to Carlisle, West Coast Mainline Trent Valley, Weardale and Teesdale Network, West Coast Mainline over Sharp, the West Highland Extension Route, and the West Somerset Railway. From UK Train Sim, however, um, this um, obviously will be shutting in August, but there is other place you can get these, actual, these items from. Um, the Lavender Line, which is also available uh, off TS Dev, uh, the UK Train Sim Freeware Packs. Um, these are, however, available at a few other places. TS Dev, Golden Age Developments on top of that as well. Uh, I'm just going to pause for a second there. Um, there's some signal bits and pieces as well that um, you need. However, they are linked all to the UK TS um, links, but you can also get them from the Seam Sound Supreme Southampton to Weymouth route. So just grab the assets pack out of there and you can put them in. Uh, from Vulcan Productions, you need the Grass Pack version 4, the Road Pack and the Track Pack. And as far as I'm aware, that is everything for that. Installation process is a lot more uh, quicker than it was last time. Um, this time round, you get an installer. Um, literally just run the installer and uh, off you go. I think, I don't know, actually, it might have been installed in the past, I can't quite remember. <laughs> but anyway, it comes with an installer. Um, so just literally lob it in, install, and make sure you've got the requirements, and off you go. And again, make sure you read the scenario supplement, which comes as a separate document. Uh, it's in the in the Zipby download, um, and that'll tell you what each scenario actually needs to run. Uh, just on the credits quickly, uh, so on track simulations team, which is Lewis Cox, who's built the route, the assets, and the scenario creation, and then the OTS team for beta testing. Um, and a special mention, so if you do enjoy this route and um, and that, please consider maybe donating to the Real Midland Railway Busley. The line is um, a charity route, relies on the public support, much like many other preserved railways in the UK. The TS version has been made out of passion for the real line and would not have happened without the countless enjoyable visits. If you would like to support the real line, please uh, do keep them uh, help them by running and uh, follow the link in the manual down at the bottom there is a link to their donations page so if you feel feel free if you uh, do want to go and support the real route uh, and just as well at the end this route does not have any affiliation with the real life midland railway butterly railway uh, and on that note let us uh, continue back towards uh, hammersmith so that's everyone on board you're now non-stop to hammersmith There's whistle boards actually linked to the track on this version as well. There's also there's another HST over there, I've just noticed. And another pace. I didn't realise they had two paces. I know they had 141. Which I believe they paired up, I think, as well, um, on an event. But I didn't realise they had two 142s, so that's interesting. And also the number 
I was card knocking around back there as well. I should have got more than what I thought. Wide it. So all in all, it's not a long route by any stretch of the imagination. It's a short run, as you can see there. But it's a nice back and forth little uh, line to fresh up and down on. Signal's just pulled off. So don't be alarmed if it don't change. It should clear as you get nearer to it. I love that. It's the, one of the VPs, uh, latest DMU packs to the pub. <laughs> and why not? I'm going to short run through to Hammersmith. It's literally just over there as we cross over the reservoir. I think in itself just a lovely little bit of uh, cracking little uh, scene. So originally this route would have gone and continued onwards at uh, Hammersmith. And it, I think it joined back up with the Midland Main Line at Ambergate. More around that area. I think just north of Ambergate it joined on. In the grand scheme of things it's not really a, a long distance. About five or ten miles at the most. It's um, another box there, which is the Hammersmith box. Not for sure if that comes from somewhere else or not. A change of ends here, most likely. We'll be back down to uh, in a moment. Yeah, that's another one of the boxes. Love the window textures, actually. Like, it's inside. Stuff in there. I'm not really sure where that's come from, if it's come from another uh, line and been moved here or not, to be honest. Most likely would have thought it will have been. ourselves set up for the other end again these are little signs and that it's the uh, Matloff bath return ticket sign there Which is literally just a little uh, turn around area of this run around and go back so the line originally would have gone in that direction sort of follows that tree line basically so these days is uh very much obstructed by uh some main road as such whatever that road is i'm not really sure <clears throat> 
I'm just going to bring up the old railway maps. Just whilst we're sat here, I'm just going to quickly show you the old route. Um, where this would have continued on and joined up. Just so you get an idea. Where is it? No. So, nope. It's so hard to try and find where you're going here. With so many lines. So Sheffield's there, air wash is there, right? I found it, I think. Built right. So bring this over. So you can't see my mouse only, but uh, So that triangle there, that is Riddings. So air wash valley is the yellow line there. So follow this yellow line here. This is our route that we're on now. That little stub that we saw at Swanwick Junction continued onwards up there to a number of obviously facilities and then uh, Butterley is here reservoir and then we're here basically so you can see that junction which is the one behind us so that is obviously it would have gone off that way so going in that direction uh, if I bring it back up again that went off down in this direction to a number of different places and looks like it continued onwards back there yeah, it joined up at Langley Mill and in this direction it looks like it went to uh, Duffield so yeah it joined up I know where that is actually I actually know where that is it's just north of uh, Derby I know where that junction is you can actually make it out on the JT for MML back to Butterley if you continue straight on which is the one I was on about before if you continue this line over you join up at um, Ambergate, which is here. So this is the middle of main line from Dar Derby to Sheffield. You join on this junction here. Then you could have took the line then over towards um, Ambergate back in the day, which had three platforms or something like that. It had a, a platform in each tri in that triangle. And you could have got a bit. You could have gone to Manchester, essentially from here. And no doubt there might have actually been some maybe some service that went that way. Who knows? Yeah, just a little bit of uh, sort of like show you where things were and what happened and what the, the actual line used to do. Take the DRF, it always helps. Just a short run back down to Butterley. It's again, it's only 15 mile hour this section, so you only get a bit of 25 mile hour running. I think it's 25 between uh, Swanwick and Riddings as well. It is a nice little bit of route, this. <clears throat> Busy train. They've all come to see the pacer. They've all come to see Lewis's hard work. I hope you enjoyed this little look at uh, Lewis's handiwork. Um, well done to Lewis as well once again on uh, on smashing it. Um, don't forget, link will be in the description. Um, the video might have gone live a day or two before the vi uh, route actually does go live. Just keep a check on that. But we will post on the actual OTS website anyway when the route does go live. But this is basically just to show you prior. Um, but yeah, excellent. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm going to open the doors here. Just going to let everyone off. All people on. But uh, yeah, so don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button for your future videos from ourselves. And uh, again, catch you on Twitch on Fridays and Sundays as usual. Um, but on that note, thank you very much for watching. Take care and we'll see you again very soon for the next video. Bye for now.